Hello and welcome back to another uh, tutorial. This time I've got a, a new microphone, so I'm pretty uh, excited to upgrade the uh, audio quality from my AirPods, which were terrible. And I got some um, dislikes and a lot of uh, comments talking about the audio quality, so I'm trying to step that up. Anyways, I had the inspiration today for um, recalling some one of my times in England going to the Bombay Gin Distillery by uh, Thomas Heatherwick. It's out in the countryside. I went there maybe a year ago after I finished uh, yeah, AA, finished school there. Um, yeah, and I thought it'd be a fun exercise to try to dive into some of the organic modeling with Sub D uh, and try to recreate it. Of course, it'll never recreate, right? The all of the intent and all the work that went into uh, Heatherwick's design, rationalization of the panels and whatnot, but I will attempt uh, to formally make it recreate it. Okay, so let's jump into Rhino. Um, I, I found these two images, uh, or I guess one image that I just rotated uh, and scaled to give me sort of a variation of the plan and uh, elevation here, which I can see, you know, in top view, I can see plan, and, and uh, I guess in left view, I can see um, exactly the elevation. I just found these online, and I'll, and I'll post the, um, the link to where I found this image in the um, description. Anyways, let's just uh, jump into this. And also, I kind of quickly modeled a little um, site. So that when I, uh, so I can so I can render and show you exactly what it looks like afterwards, and to get, just to get this scale sort of uh, appropriate. Um, also, I'm totally guessing on the scale because there's no dimensions on any of these images, so <laughs> so we'll see how that turns out. Okay, so what I'm just going to quickly do is I'm going to be in the sub D tools mostly, probably only using a few of them because I think this is sort of still like a beginner take on um, sub D, and I'm also learning as well. Um, I'm not fully confident in my abilities at all. Anyway, so what we're gonna, what I'm gonna start with is a, I'm just gonna start with a cylinder. And prior to um, recording, I did count the amount of uh, creases and pleats in one of these, um, one of these like, glass bulbs that you know is extruded from this building. So when, I, and, and so I know there's uh, 32 pleats, 16. Um, of the creases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to so I'm gonna so I'm gonna create a cylinder. I'm gonna go to this around faces and I'm gonna type in 32 because I know that's the right correct number. And then I've just created a little uh, center point. So what I'm gonna do there then is extrude this out. And now I'm gonna get height. And I oh that didn't work. Anyways. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this uh, cylinder, sub D cylinder right here in the sub D tools. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go to this around faces and I'm gonna type that 32. And then I'm gonna go to this vertical faces and just type in one for now. Oh, I guess it has to be equal number more than two, but okay, that, that can work as well. Okay, so two is okay, enter. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to fill out that quad and then, then it's going to prompt you um, to drag up. And now we, we've created, as you can see, actually, very simply, we've created the um, exact topology that's going to be needed for this entire um, creation. That's why I'm also starting out with uh, modeling this thing in sub D for you to get you sort of the introduction to how to use the topology because actually this, this modeling is quite, um, quite straightforward. Um, and you can see it's aligning here. It's gonna be, all we're gonna need to do is basically take these, a series of these like cross cut sections and array them in, in, in the correct manner to add, to replicate this. So you can see like they'll be vertical here. They're gonna be a bit more horizontal here and totally horizontal at the, at this point. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do, because I'm, I know I'm not gonna need the center, I'm gonna delete and delete actually this as well because there's no uh, point where it's a terminus then I'm going to um, let's see which one so I'm going to now just create the pleats because I know that's gonna be carried uh, along the entire geometry so I'm just gonna do that now 
if we were if I was using Maya, I would be able to do that at the end because of the local controls. But because in Rhino they don't have the local controls, I'm just gonna do it from the from the very beginning. So what I'm doing now is Control Shift and then double clicking on um, the edge loop to select it. Okay, so now you can see that I've selected all the central creases that would move in here. Let's go to top to be a little bit more professional. Normally I don't really do that, but um, we'll see. And then I'm going to hold shift and drag this in. And I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to get an exact recreation of it. I'm just trying to roughly recreate it. So that should be good enough. As you can see that did, um, we'll, we'll correct that here. Let's. Well, now what I'm going to do is control, so now they're not perfectly aligned on the top, so what I'm going to do is control shift, select all those vertices, and then go here, scale, and just type in zero, and it'll flatten itself out, which is a new, really nice um, new thing that they've added to uh, uh, Rhino 7. Okay, so let's, let's get back to creating. I'm going to go to the left, which I, as you can clearly see, I've aligned it. Um, to the viewport. Actually, let's let's do this as well. Um, well, I don't want to select my curves, so actually I'm gonna just hide those curves that I created before. Hide. Then I'm gonna select all these edge loops, and I'm also gonna scale them to zero and drag them down to a good point. And I'll show again those curves. Um, okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna quite simply roughly map it, match it out, and then we're gonna map map it out in plan to show exactly what is happening. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, move that up. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is hold down Alt and click on this tiny little dot here. And what this is gonna do is extrude. So now you can see that we've created that. So now there's an edge loop here. There's an edge loop. Actually, I'm gonna select a different color than purple. It's kind of hard for you to see in purple, I feel. Um, let's go. No, that doesn't help. Let's go like blue or something. No, Lord, that doesn't help either. Okay, that one, that one's a little bit clearer. Okay, so now you can see that there's like this edge loop here, which can can vary and doesn't matter. Anyway, so what I'm going to try to do is now I'm going to try to define the profile curves that fit in here. So I know I'm going to need one around here. Alt again, drag up. There's going to be this tight sort of creasing as this part gets very tight. And this part becomes very loose, so I'm going to, so I'm going to roughly try and do this. And I know that if I were to scale from this moment, it would, it would bulge out when I know that this is a perfect vertical. So what I'm going to do in this in this front view is actually use scale 1D. And what and what this will do is it'll only scale in this direction. So I'm going to click on this vertex and then click on this vertex and now I can sort of drag that out. And as you can see, when I click tab to go into the soft um, mode. So alt, once again, alt again, come over here. We're gonna need another uh, rough rotation. Let's place that here. Scale 1D, because I'm gonna need to bring this one in. I'm gonna roughly try to get this at the very beginning. Okay, so then, um, Alt again to extrude. Um, let's so we're almost vertical at this point already. Scale one D. Click on this vertice to this vertice, and then Alt scale and extrude back to here, and voila. I mean, it's obviously not perfect, um, but here let's see in perspective mode. I mean, it's pretty decent. Oh, oh, yeah, that's one thing I did not account for. Here, let's fix that from the top view. I'm gonna go to uh, ghosted mode so you can actually see what's going on. Anyways, let's now, so now that we sort of have this aligned in plan mode or in elevation, now let's fix it from uh, the top view. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a bit rough with this because I don't think it actually um, is so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna model in a hard view. I think that's the best way to model initially. So I'm going to 
move that in. And then I, I should be using um, scale 1D because I don't want to manipulate it in the other view. So I'm going to scale it in here and place that guy right there. Then I'm going to select this, only this loop. Um, I guess I can scale this means I'm gonna and I'm gonna move this guy over here and you can see already we're getting that loop then here if I right click and uh, double if I hold down control shift and then double click on that edge loop now we've selected that entire edge loop and I know that this is going to need to um, sort of move over a bit something like that I mean here, let's see let's see is it perfect no that is not very good ah it's because this is where it's just going to get a bit tricky and, and require a bit of uh, a, a total bit of play here let's let's move this guy let's like kind of kind of clean that up this guy needs to move like a bit over here Maybe even go a little bit more vertical, bring it up. And this, and what I can tell you from modeling in this is don't model within the soft mode and you're gonna see that, yeah, it looks pretty good. You're getting pretty good continuity, but what you may not notice, but there's like a slight bulge here, which in soft mode you may not realize, but in, in this hard select mode, that's like a very evident thing, which and I can highly recommend just fixing it in the hard mode. And it'll have wonderful, like if it looks good in the hard mode, it's gonna look good in the soft mode, I guarantee it. So generally model based purely off the sort of like hard edged um, mode, which once again is tab to all um, control between. Anyways, okay. So that's looking pretty good. I know I know it's soft, which we're going to um, subdivide, and I'm, I'm going to show you how to create all of all of that. But yeah, so I mean, it's it's looking it's looking pretty decent. Okay, let's just let's move into um, the creasing. Actually, let's what I'm going to do. Wait, for, this guy is, is bothering me a little bit. I'm going to. Uh, scale this guy in. I don't think that guy deserves to be as chunky. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to save a little bit of time here. Let's, we're going to mirror this. And then scale this down. I think I'll do it. I should be doing it in hard mode. To roughly approximate the, um, the other geometry and I know that this uh, for example this edge loop MV to move vertically snap I can oh, MV and now I can move it vertically and I know this actually basically all of this so um, this edge loop this edge loop control click double, double Double click to uh, select the whole edge loop. And this guy needs to move down. So if I go to the left view, I know that needs to be moved down, which is going to have consequences down here. Um, so actually, I'm going to go back to perspective mode. I'm going to actually delete this one just for simplicity. This guy's smaller, so I think it deserves a little bit. Um, more room but you can see now we actually I mean actually it's pretty good we got we got a little bit of an issue over here Here, let's see if we can quickly fix that if not I'm okay moving on and not being not being too concerned about it oh this guy's actually double click drag Okay, I'm fine with settling with that as the side, the top mode, and this as the side mode. So I think it's already looking really great. 
Now, the one thing I really do want to do is add a little bit of detail in it, specifically these um, sort of edge loop mullions, which are going to follow these curves, and the, the smaller glass mullions. So I'm just going to turn off that. Um, turn off that while I work now with this. this so now I'm going to quickly, or not quickly, jump into grass cover first. One thing that I'm going to use now is the bevel. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly do it on this guy. So what I'm doing is control shift, double click on each one of these. It's a little bit tedious, but you know, what can you say? Nothing's easy. So select all of these. And as you can see, we have a nice um, curvature all the way to where it meets the building. Double click, double click. Double click, double click, double click, double click, double click, double click. Okay, so now we selected all that, and I could crease them to get the edge, which actually, um, here I'll, I already went over this in one of my other videos, but there's this name selection thing, so I'm actually going to save this as the pleats. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, so that even if I unselect this, I can always go back and have that selection again, which is quite nice. Anyway, so I'll select that and I'll show you what crease does. So crease will allow you to achieve the look of how how that um, of how that building sort of terminates in, in in this like really nice area right here. How it how it scales from larger pleats to smaller pleats. But I'm gonna control Z that. And select that again, and because I'm going to be making these uh, the mullions, and you, know, you actually want a surface on each one of these, I'm going to use the bevel command, which B E V E L. Here, I'll go to hard mode so I, you can see what I'm doing and what this will do. Actually, right now it's giving me an absolute, so actually, I want an offset or proportional. No, 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 I want absolute. Yes. So what I'm going to do is just really, oh god, it's a little bit, a little bit finicky. I think it's because it's working. Oh, why is this being so difficult? Is that enough? No. I need it to be very slight. Oh man, why is this being so absolutely terrible right now? Okay, here we go. So I just quickly beveled it with a very slight uh, amount of beveling. And because we just added all these extra edge loops, now if I go into the right mode, it is gonna also have that um, really nice quality. If I go, I can go into uh, Arctic and see how nice this, um, this geometry is already. But I'm going to, um, here, let, let's, let's do that with this guy. Actually, let, here, let, let's just finish this first. So what I'm gonna do now, now that I have this, I'm going to actually turn this into um, a NURBS surface, which, here, let's, and actually, wait, here, if I select, oh yeah, those, so then now that whole selection's gone, so I can basically delete this name section, but, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to again reselect all these um, because I'm going to now crease them now that I have a surface in the middle that I can use for my offset. Select all of them. Sometimes when I'm selecting a lot of stuff, uh, my muscle just straight um, seizes up. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm like uh, missing everything in carpal tunnel syndrome. And I'm not going to do the other um, bulb because that's just going to be the same process. Um, I'll leave that up to you to uh, do on your own. 
but here, let's, and I'm showing you, I'm also gonna show you how to get those, uh, okay, so we're in right now, we're just creating those nice, uh, like metal ribs that go around the glass. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna crease this. And so now, now look at that. Now we have a, a nice flat surface in here that I'm gonna use for the mullion and then the glass. Okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do here now is, oh yeah, so I'm gonna save this on all, all the images over here. I'm gonna save this as sub D, uh, caps lock, uh, sub D. Sob D, yeah, right. Okay, so I'm just gonna save these there um, and actually make this layer that's green. And then I'm going to make another one that I'm gonna call NURBS. And what I'm gonna do right now is type in two NURBS. So I wanna offset um, these, these surfaces, these loops, and then for that, I'm going to just convert it to NURBS because that's uh, a bit easier. So what I'm going to type is, is two nerves right here. Click enter. Now I can hide, or actually, no, that's on the sub B. So I'm going to select the poly surface, change object layer to nerves. Now I can hide that. And now we're left with all nerves, um, nerve surfaces. Now I can basically, here I'm just going to select all of them. Or let's do, it's going to be offset surf. Actually, we can just explode this because I'm going to show you. And now I'm just going to unselect the fat guys. So I'm just left with the, um, with the thin ribs. Okay. Now, so now I have all of those ribs and I'm going to uh, offset surf. Let's see, I mean, so my, I'm using the units of centimeters, let's just say, it's like a typical mullion, let's just give it five centimeters or outside the glass. Let's, okay, let's be a little more generous. Let's give it like eight. Enter, it's gonna take a second to process. Um, but there we go. So now we can go back and look at this. It's even here, I'll go to my custom one that's not gonna show me the edges. And it's looking quite beautiful. And now one last thing I wanna do is I want to create um, the mullions that are going to be sort of arbitrarily. If I go here, you can see the mullions are, um, you know, that's the smaller one the way I wanna see the big guy. Okay, the big guy. This, they're 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 alternating patterns, so they're not like a single mullion that represents like an edge loop, similar to how we created. They're pretty arbitrary. So I'm actually going to use um, Grasshopper to um, s sort this out. So we're going to bring these in as B reps because they are not um, planar surfaces. So we're going to set multiple B rep. Okay, so now we have um, those B reps. And what I'm, you're quickly going to see, wait, so let's, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an ISO curve. So I want to basically create ISO curves. Um, this is the, like the NURBS variation of edge loops essentially, is that it's going to create a curve defining based on the, the UV that we input. So one important thing is that we're going to want to reparameterize this so that these surfaces are measured between zero and one. And then easy, we can easily create a series of points on these surfaces by constructing a, um, I'm sorry, a range. So this will just give us the number of numbers between zero and one. So we are, right now we're creating 10 numbers between zero and one. And then just a point, construct point. And I think we're gonna have to probably play with these parameters to see where, um, to see which U and V direction are, because that's probably the most difficult part. But I'm just going to quickly go in there and go in here. And now let's extract this as a curve. Which one is the correct one? Um, and so what we're actually going to realize is we're going to need to um, graph these numbers so that it's treated to every single surface. Um, I'm going to cell polysurf. Then invert the selection, just like these guys. 
I'm going to hide it for now. So I'm only looking at, I guess I shouldn't hide it. But you're gonna see now that with, here, let's hide these. You're gonna see that for some reason, Rhino hasn't brought in all of our U and Vs for every single surface in the same direction. Um, which is pretty annoying actually um, and, and we're wanting it obviously in this direction So we're gonna have to figure out how to flip these surface faces, which yeah, I can show you so select All the ones that need to be flipped There there's more computational ways of doing this, but I'm just gonna show you a quick way in Rhino Okay, so select the ones that need to be flipped then go to dir as in direction Then we're to go to mode Swap UV, uh, swap UV, flip all, and then enter, and boom. Now we have it. So now the only thing that, and now we can control the amount of curves that are going to be put, put, it, put in here by this number. So the number of creative numbers between zero and one. So if I obviously increase that, there's going to be more points. And this is pretty nice, however. I'm going to want to actually divide this list because remember, uh, there's sort of um, there's this staggering effect where the the millions are not aligned to each other. They're sort of evaluated at different uh, lengths per to per uh, per sheet of per panel of all these glass pieces. Um, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to use a dispatch uh, component, which breaks the list into two, sort of alternating. And so, so now I'm just going to take the A's and plug it into here. And now it's only going to affect, as you can see, it's only going to affect those on A, on the A panel list. But we're actually going to want to also dispatch these points to alternate. So I'm going to bring in this dispatch. And right now, oh, because this is grafted, it's this dispatch is now going to just bring them all in this first category and none in the second category. So actually I'm going to want to uh, oh god, Un undo anything into that and unselect this, disconnect, right click, disconnect here. So now in this dispatch is actually the place where I'm going to want to graft both of these outputs. And so now, so now I have this guy, so now I can bring this into here. So now I'm evaluating those at those correct lengths. And then let's uh, control C, control V, actually bring the other one, so the other panels and bring the other uh, numbers. So now look, now we are alternating the entire, uh, and now of course we can play with this, increase, decrease the amount of, um, the amount of mullions created on that, and we are getting something similar to what actually Heatherwick has. Um, and so what I'm gonna just gonna quickly do, I'm gonna just gonna merge these guys to create a little, let's bring, some three dimensionality to those uh, that curves. Um, normally it's not advised, but you can just flatten this because um, we're not gonna be doing any further processing. Um, then there's ways and there's components that'll do this in one component, like sort of uh, mesh piping, but those are all in um, additional uh, plugins. So I'm just gonna try to do this without any additional plugins. So I'm just gonna, I think we extruded our main mullions eight. So I'm just gonna do this one like, um, Three. Oh, yep. Sorry. Z in the Z direction. We could do it along um, tangent to the surface edge, but these are pretty small, so I don't think it's going to be um, a big impact. And then let's just offset these surfaces. Um, uh, direction, distance. Let's do it again. Three in there. Here we can just parametrically use that three that three. Um, this is going to give us a toggle, right click, set boolean, true. So this is uh, off both sides. So now it's going to be a three dimensional thing. And I think this is a solid offset. Yeah, perfect. And now bake. Let's uh, keep that in nerves group. And now with this simple little script right here, which I'll allow you to see the whole in entirety. We have, I'll save that, close and close. And now we have our um, beautiful Heatherwick, uh, 
beautiful weather. I don't think we nailed the proportions exactly. I must say that. But <laughs> I think the mullions could use a little bit of work. But it's a pretty, uh, pretty quick little um, exercise. Here, let's bring in the site. And some people. Oh yeah, this this crease right here did not turn out exactly the way I wanted it to. And <laughs> the scale, the scale looks a little bit off. Actually, no, those these pieces are pretty big. So yeah, this is a uh, this is looking at that project. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. I'm gonna go on and finish the other one. I'll include like obviously a, a screenshot of the final version um, after this. But thanks for. Um, following my channel, please like and subscribe and you know recommend to any friends that need to learn get up on their uh, Rhino 7 game. Anyways, thank you very much and have a good day. Ciao.